I finally brought the solar plane V3 up here to Washington State and today we are going to fly to the top of that mountain right there or at least try to. So this will be the second time that I've flown this plane in about two years. I flew it last weekend for a quick test and it seems to work pretty well. I'll put that footage at the end of this video. So I'll talk more about the setup once we're in the air. Let's take off. Before we take off, I'd like to thank UniConverter for sponsoring this video. UniConverter is a powerful video converter software that allows you to compress, convert, burn, and edit over 1,000 different file types. More information about UniConverter and how it helped me make this video later. Okay, we're in the air. I'm just kind of flying around overhead, gaining some altitude right now so that I can start to fly out without having these trees block the line of sight. Yeah, it's windy, and this is not a good plane for windy days. <laughs> I mean, it's not windy, it's breezy, but this plane is just so lightweight that it, it struggles. I'm circling above a hawk, so hopefully I'll uh, gain some lift from the thermal that he's in. Thermaling with the solar plane. Thermals are solar power too, so we're just getting two forms of solar power. Okay, I'm uh, pretty high up now, so I'm gonna start making my way over towards the peak. So like I said before, this is only the second time I've flown this plane in like two and a half years. It's been in the garage at my parents' house in Utah just sitting. I didn't initially bring it up here to Washington when I moved here because, you know, there's not a lot of sun in the winters and it's hard to move because the plane is so big and fragile. But I recently went to Utah, so I brought it on the way back. Now, my last flight with this plane in Utah was four hours long, and that goes to show that the solar panels definitely make a big difference. Today I'm flying with a 2200 milliamp hour four cell battery, and that's a good number to keep in mind because if you look on the OSD right here, you'll see how many milliamp hours I've consumed. So throughout the flight, you'll notice that I'll consume more milliamp hours than the battery has on board. So that goes to show that the solar power is definitely working. Now I flew this thing last weekend and I'll put the video from that at the end of this flight. But during that flight, I was using a tiny battery. I think it was a 1300 milliamp hour four cell. And during that flight, I consumed way more capacity than 1300 milliamp hours. And the flight was like 30 minutes long and that's pretty good for such a tiny battery. That means it's obviously using solar power. So to get the solar power from the cells on the wing to the battery, I'm using a Genesun MPPT charge controller. It's a GV5, meaning it's rated for five amps. And if these cells are facing directly into the sun, they'll do a little over four amps. So it's a pretty appropriately sized charge controller. I'm pulling 5.5 or 5.7 amps. You can see in the top right hand corner of the screen here. So I'm probably pulling a little bit more power than the cells are able to provide. That's assuming that the cells are pointing directly into the sun, which they're, they're at a little bit of an angle, so they're probably not creating four amps. They're probably closer to three amps. So, I'm, so that means the motor is only drawing two amps from the battery. So I'm getting three free amps right now, roughly. So the wind is coming from the north, so I'm kind of flying, like I'm kind of crabbing into the wind, but the mountain's getting closer for sure, so I'm making progress. I've flown up there with my ASW28, that glider I used for the autonomous soaring video. So it's definitely doable with RC. Wow, yeah, it's turbulent. The plane just got completely turned around 180 degrees. I've got the Pinpoint RC black box on board, so if it were to crash, I would have a cellular connection that gives me a GPS position of where the plane is at. So that's nice for peace of mind. I've got the Vector OSD and autopilot system on board and it's not tuned well. I haven't touched the tuning for like two and a half years and back then I didn't know how to tune an autopilot or I don't know I think I did but I just didn't put a lot of time into it. But uh yeah I'm definitely having to give it a lot of manual input. If I do another solar plane um, I'll definitely put RDU Pilot or PX4 on it. I'm getting up there, making good progress. From the uh, FPV camera though, the mountain just kind of looks like a big shadow. So this is a really crappy FPV camera. It's so small, obviously. I wanted it to be uh, aerodynamically efficient. Hi there. Hello. We were admiring your flying skills. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where is it? We couldn't, we lost track of it. Oh, uh, it's up by the mountain over oh, okay. there. okay. Yeah, it's pretty far away. We lost it. How far range does it have? Oh, uh, I don't really know. Oh, okay. It should, in theory, be able to go 10 or 20 miles maybe, but... 
Yeah, you can see the video oh, from it gosh. live right there. Now? So this is a solar powered plane. So it's got a bunch of solar cells on the wing. No kidding. So it's pulling about six amps and about three of those are coming from the solar cells. Cool. Oh, is this your science project? Uh, I'm mean, not for school or anything. It's just for fun. Just for fun? Yeah. Well, we were wondering, we said, I bet you he could sell these photos. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, this camera is obviously not very good, but yeah, I mean, if you put a nicer one on there, you could probably get some nice pictures. That's fun. Yeah. Mind if I take the picture? Go ahead. I wish I'd get my picture too. Uh, okay, I'll just stand <laughs> over here and have it. Okay. <laughs> it's a little young, but that's all right. <laughs> Tell him I'm a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you fly out here quite a bit? I've flown out here once before. Okay. But I've seen people flying out here pretty frequently. Well, yeah, and you, you kind of got the updraft. Yeah. We were watching, I think it was a hawk. He was kind of oh, yeah. going around the, yep. the airplane, kind of going, hmm, what are you doing in my airspace? Yeah, I saw that, and I was trying to find the lift that he was riding and gain some altitude with it. Oh. But yeah, they're better at finding thermals than I am, that's for sure. Well, you'll get better <laughs> with practice, I'm sure. You going to go into avionics? I work for a drone company right now. Oh, do I'm you? out in Woodenville, yeah. Okay. But they do, like, big multi-rotor type drones for the cinema industry. Okay. So. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think I'm over the top of the peak right now, or at least close. It's okay. kind of hard to tell with this low quality video. Yeah, you can't see it from the ground. I mean, it's no. totally invisible. It's, it would, yeah, it would just be a little speck if you could yeah. even find where it was. Does it record all this so that you have a record? Yep. It, it's recording on here, but also on the plane. Yeah, day like today, you can almost fly forever. Did yeah. It, did it actually go into the cloud? Uh, there's a cloud yeah, over to the right. Yeah, we were looking at it, we said, I think it went into the cloud. There's a cloud right there. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, from here it doesn't, oh wow, there's a lot of clouds. So it takes pictures even in the cloud. Huh? Yeah, it should send, send the image through the cloud. Does it tell you when it's running out of steam so you know it's time to bring it home? Um, I can see, like, voltage right here. Oh, okay. So, I can tell what's going on pretty well. Yeah, you do have to be careful for sure. Yeah, you don't want to lose it on that mountain. It'd be <laughs> yeah. heck of a hike to get it back. Yeah, yeah, that would not be fun. <laughs> no, it would not. <laughs> <laughs> a long hike. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it's a great hobby. It's got an autopilot on it too, so worst case, I flip a switch and it'll fly back. Oh, it's okay, it knows where home is. Oh, yeah. So Phone cool. home. Did you get this where you were? No, <laughs> this is all just stuff I've had for years and years. Okay. So. Well, Have best of one. luck. Thanks. Become a cin cinematographer. Yeah, I would love to. So yeah, I've been kind of circling over the cliffs and over the peak, um, but it's hard to tell from this crappy FPV feed where exactly I am. Like I see a bunch of rocks, but that doesn't really tell me much because there's a lot of rocks up there. It's so hard to make out like the elevation profile of the mountain from this FPV feed. Everything just kind of looks flat. <laughs> Probably because the camera is aspherical and it's so wide. Oh, I am kind of in a cloud. Amazing. I'm not concerned about my battery at all because once the voltage starts to get too low and I decide to come home, it should charge um, and I should get power back as it's coming home from the solar cells. Although if one of these clouds goes over me, then that won't be the case, but wow, it's getting tossed around. Okay, I think I see where I am now. I'm pretty far below the actual peak. so. I felt like I was higher before. I think I might have just dropped a lot. I'm not completely sure. But anyways, I think I'm gonna call it at this. Um, it's getting pretty bouncy up there and I don't wanna lose this plane. Maybe I'll kind of fly upwind a little bit before I head home. Oh yeah, now that I'm kind of a bit further away from the mountain, I can get a better view of it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I ever actually got up over the peak. I might have just been Kind of over the foothills before the mountain. I'm still not sure. Wow, and it is rough up there. Holy cow, I'm just getting tossed around. My ground speed is really low. I'm only going two miles an hour, meters per second. I forgot. I don't know what this <laughs> I don't know what the units are on this OSD. It's been so long since I set it up. Okay, I've gone north for a little bit into the wind. I'm going to aim home. Ah. Uh, the camera stopped recording. I don't know why. I think I'm making pretty good progress. I'm coming home faster than I thought I would. Now I'm at 15.3 volts loaded at two amps. So if I lower my throttle to zero, 15.4. Ooh! 
Ooh, we're charging. That's exciting. Voltage is going up. That's great. So that means the solar, and I've been doing about two amps. So that means the solar cells are providing more than two amps. That's excellent. Getting closer. I'm going fast. I must not have much of a headwind. I think that's obvious because I'm going 20 miles an hour, which is really fast for this plane. But I thought it would be more of a crosswind. And looking at the peak here from the ground, there's clouds. I can actually turn and show you. Um, yeah, the peak is now, the top of the peak is getting concealed in the clouds. So probably wouldn't be good to be up there right now anyways. Because I might get lost. Well, I'm still really high and I'm getting pretty close to home. So I'm gonna cut my throttle now and just glide back. Well, I'm gonna set up this GoPro to uh, hopefully film the landing. So I've consumed 3,500 milliamp hours and it was a 2,200 milliamp hour battery and I've probably got quite a few milliamp hours of power left in the battery. We're up to 15.65 volts from 15.3. So I've gained 0.35 volts since I last checked, which is pretty good. I see it. Wow, it's really far up there. So majestic, so high. Damn. So ideally, I would like to fly around here for a while and see how long I can stay up before the battery drains all the way, but I have to get back to work. So I wasn't sure if the solar cells would work as well as they used to because one of them got kind of damaged and they're all in series. So if one is damaged, then that affects the performance of all of the cells. Um, and it's crunched in there, but I think it must, the crunch must not be obstructing any electrical flow because it seems to be working just fine or just as well as it used to two years ago. It is so majestic. It is just floating. We're up to 15.8 volts. That's awesome. So I just throttled back up to extend the duration of the flight a little bit, um, but now I'll land because I got to go to work. So I did just use up some of that voltage that I had gained back over the course of that glide. Now we're down to 15.6 volts, which is still more than I started at when I started gliding up there at the top of the mountain. So that's awesome. So that was a 3,800 milliamp hour flight. Awesome. 45 minutes, 46 minutes just about, and I'm coming into land. It's not really moving. It's just kind of sitting there into the wind. I'll do a flyby before I land, just because this thing is so majestic. Woo! <laughs> it's so slow. That is too good. Woo! <laughs> it's so slow. Good to have you back, solar plane. And this camera is at 2% battery, just in time. Got my janky EC3 plugged into an XT60 and the Genesun MPPT controller in there. Well, that worked great. Here's some video from my flight last weekend for those of you interested in hearing a few more technical details. Thanks again to UniConverter for sponsoring this video. UniConverter can convert any video type to thousands of other different video codecs quickly and efficiently. UniConverter helped me make this video because the files from my little onboard FPV DVR were recorded in an AVI format, so my Mac couldn't play them. I used UniConverter to convert the AVIs to MOVs to be compatible with my editing program. If you ever have video compatibility issues, give UniConverter a try. See the link in the description for more info. Since I last flew this thing about two years ago, this has been the most frequently requested video on my channel, is to do more solar plane project. Now, I'm not super confident that we're gonna sustain flight today on 100% solar power for a few reasons. One is that we're testing out a new MPPT charge controller. I'll talk about that in a bit. And also there's some damage on one of the solar cells um, from storage. So I'm not sure if that really affects the efficiency very much. It probably does since all the cells are wired in series, but not completely sure. We'll see, I guess. And the sun isn't completely at high noon. It's decently high in the sky. I think it's about 10 a.m. So I'm just going to see if this thing still flies. It flies. It's just as majestic as I remember. Super slow. So I have a Genesun GV5 solar charge controller in it, and that's an MPPT charge controller, so in theory it should be really efficient. Okay, so right now we're at 16 volts. 
Now that's gonna be the number to pay attention to, to see if that drops or stays the same throughout the flight. And it looks like it's uh, maintaining altitude at about 2.8 amps maybe. I'm kind of surprised because it's on a four cell battery now. The reason I went down to a four cell battery is because this Genesun charge controller um, is made for a four cell lithium battery. If I recall correctly, during the last flight I was using a five cell battery because I basically had the battery connected directly to the solar cells. And the voltage of a five cell battery was the most efficient point for the solar cells to just directly charge the battery. And that worked pretty well. I think the last flight with this plane was like four hours long. So I'm using a relatively small battery. I think it's a 1300 milliamp hour 4S. So that's much smaller than the uh, than the five cell battery that I was using before. If this thing is not completely relying on solar power, we should see the voltage start to drop pretty quickly due to the small battery capacity. Um, it might drop now because I'm gonna climb up, gain some more altitude, throttling up to seven amps. So in the last year or so, the video where I flew for four hours has gotten really popular. I think it's up to like 800,000 views. And there have been a couple really common suggestions that I wanna talk about. The first is to have two batteries on board and charge one and drain the other and then switch back and forth. And that wouldn't really have any real advantage because you can charge the same battery that you're draining um, at the same time. And there's no downside to doing that. Like it'll, it, all the energy is just either flowing to the motor or to the battery. The other suggestion was to use super capacitors. That's kind of a scary concept because if a huge cloud goes in front of the plane or something like that, you could run out of energy pretty quickly. And yeah, they can charge really fast, but the solar cells can't really give power really fast. The LiPo battery that's on board right now has no issue charging at the maximum power that the solar panels can provide. So I don't really see a benefit to using super capacitors. Maybe they're a little lighter, but like I would still be super sketched out that they would discharge too much too quickly. I can only really see those being a benefit if like the solar cells were able to give a ton of power really quickly and I, I needed to charge the battery super quickly, but that's just not the case. So I'm not completely sure what my plans for this plane are in the future. I am currently working on the solar plane V5, which is gonna be a flying wing. And I'll talk all about that in future videos. Once I get that thing flying, I won't really have any need for this solar plane. Um, and like I said before, one of the solar cells is damaged and it's just getting pretty old at this point. So one option I've been considering is to take all the solar cells out of the wing um, because they weigh quite a bit and then just cover the wing back up with some um, mono coat and just basically make the plane really lightweight and have it fly on battery power and it'll just fly so slowly. And I could use that for thermaling or could put an autopilot on it and chase it with little drones because it's so slow and stable. Um, I could just have a lot of fun with a super lightweight, slow flying plane. Also, these solar cells, they're called like the SunPower Maxion like C60, I think. That could be wrong. But anyways, I bought them all off AliExpress, which is pretty sketchy. I would not doubt that these are all just like quality control reject cells or something like that. Um, I actually just spent a bunch of money buying from an actual official SunPower distributor and I had to buy 120 solar cells. So I take that back what I said earlier. I think now I'm at like 4.2 amps and I'm maintaining altitude pretty well. So that makes sense. Um, I don't know why it was maintaining altitude earlier. Maybe I was actually just descending a little bit and didn't really realize it, but it's pulling a bit more power now, and that makes sense because we're running lower voltage. As your voltage drops, your current increases, um, and the watts stay the same. It looks like the voltage is kind of just hovering around 15 now. So it dropped from 16 to 15 when I throttled up there, and now it's just kind of consistent. I'm not putting any thought into my flight pattern and optimizing for maximum uh, sun hitting the solar cells. There are the wing ribs that kind of create sh little shadows on the solar cells um, When the sun's at an angle and I've kind of been flying at an angle, so it's probably not ideal I'll try and start going um, Lengthwise down the field to improve the efficiency 
Okay, the voltage looks like it's kind of dropping below 15 a little bit, and uh, I'm definitely not gaining altitude, so I'm gonna have to throttle up even more. Yeah, definitely not likely that it's going to be able to sustain flight on solar power. It's also really difficult to say what the Genesun MPPT charge controller is doing because for all I know, it could be just like cutting in and out or not working. I don't, like, I don't know, I just haven't tested it thoroughly enough. Um, it was really easy to know what the solar cells were doing when I had them wired just directly into the battery because they would just always give the battery what they could. This airframe is definitely not uh, ultra efficient, aerodynamically speaking. There are some big improvements to be made and that's kind of one of the reasons I'm uh, starting to work on solar plane V4. Okay, so this is cool. I've consumed 1900 milliamp hours, almost 2000 milliamp hours. And this is only a 1300 milliamp hour battery, or it could be 1600, I forget. But anyways, I've consumed more uh, current than, I've consumed more amp hours than I have on board in the battery. So that definitely means the solar cells are doing something and the Genesun MPPT charge controller is charging the battery and giving power to the power system. Voltage is still dropping a little bit. It's at 14.6. We're pulling 4.5-ish amps. I'm gonna have to land pretty soon, I'm down to 14 volts, which is pretty low. So I just stuck a multimeter on here and I'm measuring the current right before the battery. And it looks like it's charging at three amps. So that's pretty good. Um, obviously I couldn't sustain flight at three amps, but if I could, then this thing would be able to stay in the air whenever the sun is shining. And then you can see here, if I put my hand over the, just one of the solar cells, even the current drops to like 1.8 amps. So that shows how important keeping the shadows off the solar cells are. So I just turned the plane 90 degrees to the sun. Um, and the current didn't really drop. Actually, it went up, probably because the sun is rising higher and higher in the sky. But you can see how the edges of the solar cells are just slightly in the shadow, and that's probably how it was for the most, most of the time during that flight. But it doesn't seem to affect it too much. So let's play around a little bit here. I'll try tipping the plane away from the sun. I went down to 2.9 amps. I'll lift the wings up closer to the sun, 3.9. 4 amps, 4.2, oh, and the multimeter is going to slide off. Um, so yeah, it's capable of going up higher. Um, the charge controller is capable of 5 amps, but I wonder what the solar cells are capable of in their current state, including the crack over there. Just propped the plane up at an angle, and now we're doing 4.2 amps, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, 5. That multimeter is going to fall off. Yeah, I don't think it'll go much above 4.5. Which, if it were doing 4.5 amps during that whole flight, I would probably still be flying. That's quite a bit of power. So now I have the solar cells connected directly to the power system, meaning the motor, and I'm going to just throttle up and control the current draw from the solar cells via the throttle and see how many amps I can do. 3.2 amps. I could see that the current started to drop as I raised the throttle above the 3.2 amp mark. So with it still in this exact same orientation relative to the sun, I'll plug in the MPPT controller and we'll see what it goes to. So the MPPT is doing 3.2 as well. So it's about the same. So that goes to show that if my throttle was always at the optimal point, to get the most out of the solar cells and the solar cells were connected directly to the motor, then it could be just as efficient as this MPPT charge controller. But it looks like the MPPT controller is the way to go in this case because I obviously don't always wanna have my throttle at, at a certain point. I want control of my throttle. I don't want the throttle to be optimized to the power output. I did get this little thing, I think it's called the Solar Bear. It's like a ATtiny85 based solar charge controller that basically modulates the throttle to achieve optimum solar cell efficiency. Um, and I could slap it on here and test it out, but I don't think this is the right platform. 
because the solar cells don't look like they're able to give out quite enough power um, to climb and have a safe power margin for flight. So that was great. Got reunited with the old solar plane. I've gotten better results in the past, but that wasn't bad. I mean, that was still a pretty damn long flight for a little tiny battery. I should pull that thing out, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, 1300 milliamp hour. And it's kind of a crappy old battery, so that's pretty good. So the solar cells, oh, there's a rock I put in there to get the center of gravity right. <laughs> so yeah, the solar cells were definitely doing something. They were probably delivering roughly three amps throughout that flight. It would be great to get another current sensor on here to measure the uh, power that the motor's drawing and the power that the solar cells are giving. So when I get my RDU pilot set up on my next plane, I'll do dual current sensors. But anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. And subscribe for the next solar plane episode. Oh yeah, and if you want to see all the past episodes, they're all in the solar plane playlist. So check that out. Adios.